Well, they really are spoiling us at the moment, aren't they? Less than a week after the last trailer, we got another brand new Doctor Who trailer for the season one of Shutigawa's Doctor Who, featuring even more brand new footage. We've got space babies, we've got apocalyptic landscapes, augmented reality, and a very angry Doctor making a speech. So in this video, I'm gonna look at it clip by clip and break down everything we see and what it might mean. Strap in. Was the Doctor might say, you ready for this? Because yes, first of all, the very first shot we get is a fourth wall break, likely recorded just for this trailer. It's probably not for a, from the episode, it's from any of the episodes itself. It's bookended by another one at the end. But one thing I've not seen people comment on is the location he is in while he's making this, this declaration to us, while he's talking to us, the audience. Because yes, he's in the TARDIS. You can see the console in the background, but it kind of also looks like he's in a corridor. So is this what the corridors look like through those doors from the TARDIS control room? With the swirly lines, it kind of looks a bit trippy, like you're stepping into a vortex almost just by walking into them. I like it. I think it, you know, I would prefer some round doors on the wall, but if this is what they're going to go for for the corridor, so be it. I'm hoping this is a physical set and we'll get to go into those corridors maybe, even maybe some other rooms of the TARDIS at some point during the season but we'll see. We get a quick shot of Unit HQ that we got in the last trailer, then a new shot of Shooty from the 60s musical episode. Given the spotlight shining on him, I reckon this is just before he starts to sing a song. More from that later. Get that shot of the TARDIS landing in Ruby's flat from the last trailer, but with an extra reaction shot from Ruby's adopted mum there. Two shots from two different trailers paired together for the first time, which they probably do follow on from each other. The Give Me a The Eleven and Hugging Rose at Unit HQ, they kind of look like they follow on from each other. And we get that cheeky wink again. Now, stay back! This very much feels like the Doctor taking charge at Unit HQ. Given the costume, I'd say it's probably in the finale. Now the start of that line, now stay back, is edited to sound like it goes into the next bit of the voiceover over the vortex. Now stay back! We are going to walk through time. That's edited like it flows into one another, but it does sound edited. That sentence, that second half of that sentence is probably from a different episode even, definitely a different bit. Uh, I would say it's possibly from the musical episode given the rock through time reference. Now, with this clip of the Vortex, Russell has said that the sparks we have seen through various clips so far, um, both in the episodes we've seen already and in the clips of the trailers, he said that the sparks as the TARDIS skims the edge of the TARDIS are relevant to the plot. They're not just a visual flare. So let me know in the comments what you think these sparks might mean. We get a lovely futuristic city in a dome. The buildings look kind of interesting here. They're they look like skyscrapers, but the kind of shape is very much evocative of medieval castles. We can't see them too clearly, but they've got a kind of medieval castle look to them. So is this an alien planet where that's just the aesthetic or is this some kind of altered history of Earth where the, the buildings have developed like this? Very quick shots of the TARDIS, presumably having just landed on that cliff that in the previous trailer, we saw the TARDIS standing on all grown over with moss. So when they leave here in this shot, do they not come back for a very long time? This is the first time we've seen the orange Parker jacket too. So they've obviously landed somewhere a bit chilly, which, you know, to be fair, could just be an English cliffside, but it could be somewhere else. Could be somewhere like Scandinavia, somewhere like that. A shot from the 60s episode we've seen before and the dancing in the control room of the recording studio that we've already seen which is probably mid-musical number. Then we get this shot of an opening of a window in a space station with Ruby looking out on a, a quite beautiful scene. But the thing I want to point to here is the things at the side of the image, some creatures being grown in tubes. Are these the space babies, perhaps? Given Ruby's costume, this is probably episode one, so that makes sense. We get the Bridgerton dancing scene we've had before, and then we get Jonathan Groff's character and the Doctor kind of eyeing each other up, suspiciously or flirtatiously, who knows, or both maybe. I still think he's a time agent. I am open to the possibility that he might be Captain Jack. Quick shot of Ruby just turning towards camera. If I had to guess, based on the background of this, I'd say it's maybe episode three. It looks a bit like the background of where the Doctor steps on the landmine. Based on the costume, this is Ruby exiting the TARDIS in episode one, possibly just arrived at the space station. Sparks are flying, so the TARDIS has had another dramatic landing. It seems to be happening a lot. Combined with the sparks in the vortex, 
that's probably relevant somehow because we've you know we had the crash in wild blue yonder we had the very dramatic thing from the trailer of uh, it arriving in Ruby's flat, and now with this one as well. A lot of very dramatic TARDIS landings. Ruby in the TARDIS, and I think the look on her face is one of being almost doubting, a kind of like, look, you're telling me that if I step out there, we won't be where we were a second ago. Maybe this is her first trip in the TARDIS. Fire out the side of the room, episode one probably soon after landing, and Ruby saying, No, you made it worse. The doctor's done something. It's making it worse. Here's the Doctor leaving the TARDIS at the beginning of the 60s episode, and then both crossing Abbey Road like the famous image from the Beatles album cover. Can't tell, quite tell if Ruby's dancing across or stumbling here though. Here's a different angle on the spaceship we saw in the previous trailer, probably the one from episode one with the space babies on. Talking of which, space babies! And they talk. It's you. I said in my trailer reaction video, that I got a kind of look who's talking vibes. But the, in that film, the adults couldn't hear the babies, only we as the audience could hear the babies. Whereas it looks like the doctor can very much hear the babies. So maybe it's more like boss baby. How intelligent do we think those babies are? Do we think they're basically adult minds trapped in babies' bodies? Oh, is it the universe, man? Yes, it is. Let's have a random landing. Probably how they end up either on the space baby space station or how they end up in dinosaur times. I'm probably gonna Hedge my bets and say, maybe the latter, the Dinosaur Times one. This is how they end up in Dinosaur Times. They set it to random. Is it safe? Almost never. So with information of the title reveals and other information, I now think this is the Dot and Bubble episode. We saw this character in the last trailer. I thought it might be related to a different episode, but I think this is the Dot and Bubble episode definitely now. Uh, looks very Black Mirror-esque. Maybe dealing with commentary on social media or dating apps. This shot, looks like this character is maybe looking at the app on a screen or hologram or possibly a heads up display a kind of augmented reality type thing because uh, these are the slugs monsters we saw that are definitely from the same episode because they've previously been seen in shots with that other character and there's kind of floating holographic arrow at the bottom and some uh, floating words that say forward at the top so yeah i think this may be some kind of augmented reality story and maybe the augmented reality somehow influences the people and kind of leads them to their death and the eat uh, being eaten by the slugs perhaps ruby and the doctor running away from the bogeymen monsters here that looks nasty scary monster ruby amongst a lot of destruction i wonder this could possibly be a vision of some kind that she gets maybe it's got that kind of feel to it or it's a future they visit and then they have to prevent from happening which would go for you know fit with the the voiceover they've chosen for this bit but maybe they're trying to trying to lead us away listen to me this is what we're trying to stop all of life extinguished big stakes then uh, feels a little too similar to the flux to be coming so soon after that but i don't know maybe lower stakes for season one might have been better you'll keep us safe i will keep us safe the doctor can't really ever promise that truthfully yet he keeps doing it doctor looking shocked in his season finale costume has something horrific just happened to ruby maybe as a tear down his eye or is that just a reaction to what's happening to earth if he doesn't prevent it first episode again we've seen this before we get the doctor's reaction here to what she said and it's a smile and a chuckle he likes her attitude here this is probably their first adventure so he's deciding that he's made the right choice in bringing her along i think she is companion material we've seen this dust cloud consuming london in the last trailer there's a storm coming we got this new voiceover there's a storm coming in whose voice is that it could be susan twists maybe it could be it sounds a little bit younger than susan twist um it didn't sound like anybody i recognize so i think it's a new character but sounds like i mean it, it has an ominous tone maybe a bit villainous you called jinx monsoon's character emerging from a piano is this maybe her being summoned for the first time and where the music starts maybe somebody invokes something that calls her presence to the earth and then the magic starts and the music starts and everyone starts singing shooty's voice over here honey i'm a much bigger bang than you bargained for sounds like he's speaking to a villain is he going to be the main villain of the series perhaps probably sounds like a kind of season finale type speech we've got ruby worried looking on while holding a microphone just before she gets wrapped in musical notes perhaps we saw that in the previous trailer and it's going to come up again in this one another view of that destroyed landscape we saw earlier without 
Ruby in this time. We get a cool zoom into the TARDIS through the fire. It kind of reminds me a bit of the War Doctor bit from the 60th, where we zoom into the painting of Gallifrey and the destruction on Gallifrey and eventually reaches the Doctor. It kind of feels a bit like that, but reaching the TARDIS. I will shatter this silly little battlefield into dust. In a heartbeat. Into dust. More of the Doctor's dramatic powerful speech. This is an angry Doctor. And as we've seen from the 12th Doctor, when you hurt the Doctor's friends, he can go to extreme lengths. Again, this kind of makes me think something is going to happen to Ruby. All shaking with anger. And this is going to be one of those defining Doctor speeches, I think. You get a shot of him looking over presumably 60s Liverpool. And the voiceover, I don't have a people, I don't have a home, referring to his true origins as the timeless child. He doesn't know where he's from, he doesn't know what his people are, he doesn't have a people, he doesn't have a home. We get a nice shot here of Regency outfit Doctor and it crossfades to Ruby in very much the same sort of position, side on. The, the, their faces blend together quite nicely when they get the crossfade. Probably emphasising, because he's just been talking about not having a home, not having a family, not having a people, emphasising their similar positions as orphans. Now here is the TARDIS landing on that cliff, materialising on that cliff again, that it's going to end up on for a very long time if the other trailer is to be believed. Ruby looking shocked at what she's seeing coming out of the TARDIS. This looks like a kind of first experience of coming outside of the TARDIS after it's moved. Probably seeing those dinosaurs, which is backed up at the next shot, which is where we see the dinosaurs. Uh, running down corridors in the 60s ep. Gotta have a bit of running down corridors. Here's from the Regency episode, the Doctor being held at gunpoint by Jonathan Groff's character. We know he's some kind of anti antagonist. Is he the rogue of the title? And the Doctor stepping on that landmine. We've seen that before in episode three. Here's Ruby amongst, it's either snow or ash, I think. And it could be, looking at it, maybe on the unit helipad. Shocked Doctor face. He does a lot of shocked faces in 60s outfit the previously seen trapped by musical notes ruby and a third view of that space station they're really milking the cgi model of that space station we're going to see it from all angles this shot is him opening his eyes that we've had in lots of really early promo stuff um, and it's been kind of presumed that maybe this was just shot for promos but we'll see lots of planets quite close together Maybe the ones, same ones being consumed by dust later? Or it's just a location like nearby where the space station is in episode one or something. Then we get singing and dancing Doctor. We don't hear what he's singing in this trailer, but we can see him looking very cool. And it looks like it's a really big musical number. Got a quick shot of him letting a butterfly go. So given the stuff we got in the last trailer of the stepping on the butterfly and the sudden change of history where Ruby is now a completely different species, I reckon he somehow brings the butterfly straight back to life and sets it on its way and that restores everything back to how it's meant to be. So all of that shape, you know, changing history stuff that we saw in that clip will be over and done with in a few minutes, I think. But probably is there to set up something like a Chekhov's gun later on where changing of history is going to be an important point in the series, but it's there to kind of set the audience up for it. Another big dance number from the musical episode, including a little bit of Ruby dancing. There's the orange duffel coats again. That tree in the background was in another shot from a previous trailer of Ruby sitting down and a sort of figure behind her in the distance. Ruby in the TARDIS, which is probably the first episode. Doctor and Ruby jumping for joy. So amongst the snow and the ash falling. So that's probably means the snow slash ash isn't a bad thing. Maybe it's signals that they've won somehow. And that's just the beginning. And then finally, we get another full full break filmed for the trailer, presumably. There you go. That is everything that was in that trailer. What do you think of some of the theories that I've come up with in this video? What do you think is happening yourselves? What are you most looking forward to? Which episode are you most looking forward to? Let me know all of that in the comments down below. As I said, we also had the episode titles revealed. So if you want to see what I thought those might mean, then click here to check out that video. I'll see you for more Doctor Who videos soon. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. Goodbye.